let's get to the root of what I want to talk about today. The thing that fascinates me is, we know that stuff. You know that stuff. Everybody understands, everybody has become literate about the relationship between lifestyle habits and health. We know the difference between an apple and a piece of apple pie. We know the difference between going out dancing and watching Dancing with the Stars. We get it. We understand it. Well, if we get it and we understand it, then has cognitive understanding led to behavior change? And the answer is no. The answer is something is getting in the way. For example, we know all about the food pyramid, but that's not the way we eat. This is the way we actually eat. This is one day in the dietary life of the United States. Doesn't look like much of a pyramid to me. We know about healthy eating. We don't practice it. Something gets in the way. What about exercise? Everybody exercises in the U.S. You can't buy a monthly magazine that doesn't have rippling abs on the front cover, doesn't have a Sports Illustrated model and about four inches of spandex looking really buff. Everybody exercises in the U.S. It's a myth. It's a myth. Americans do not exercise. What Americans do is buy exercise stuff. 25% of all the shoes sold in the United States are athletic shoes. We put them on, we lace them up, we trot to the refrigerator, that's as far as we get. We know about healthy exercise, we don't practice it. Something gets in the way. What about smoking? You'd have to come from another planet not to understand the debilitating effects of smoking on health. Seven-year-olds will come home from school and tell you why you should not be smoking. So we get it, we understand it. Well, if we get it, we understand it, then the rate should have fallen and stayed down. And they have, for one group and one group only. And that group is Caucasian males who wear ties. That's the only group that's cut smoking rates. When you look at minority, when you look at blue collar, when you look at women, the rates went down and they went back up again. We have more teenage girls smoking today than in 1960. Is it because we don't understand about tobacco? No, we understand something gets in the way. We've been looking at this issue, what could possibly get in the way for a long time. And the conclusion that we've drawn is that it is daily chronic stress. In fact, 89% of Americans say, I've just got way too much stress in my life. And the interesting thing in working with different groups and studies about this is that it's not the big ticket items that are stressing us. People are not stressed about Iraq. People are not stressed about their 401k. I'll tell you why we're stressed. Everybody's out of time, particularly women. Everybody is out of time. We're multitasking. We're trying to do more and more things in less and less time. Let me tell you about a conversation I had with uh, a, an engineer, a female engineer at the Boeing company. She said, let me tell you about my day. I'm answering emails at 9 o'clock at night. I'm doing my laundry at midnight. I'm in a grocery store at 6 a.m. I'm dropping kids at school at 7. I punch into Boeing at 8. I write down the 20 things I must do that day to have a successful day. I never get them done. So I go through the same exercise the following day with a new set of 20. I've got a holdover of 10. Weekends used to be for kicking back. Now it's for catching up. You do all the things on a weekend that you didn't get to do during the course of the week. Well, when you live with that kind of chronic stress that comes from constantly being out of time, you can know so much about the food pyramid that it's tattooed on your forehead, but M&Ms are lunch. When you're, when you're under stress, you light up cigarettes. When you're under stress, you don't go to the gym. So what we find is that stress has become a, a real player in terms of dietary and exercise compliance, in terms of doing the things that we know that we should be doing. <music>